Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Josh and today we're going to be talking about the Panasonic S5 but for photography. So since this camera came out it's been extremely popular amongst the videographers out there and that's because Panasonic have literally packed so many amazing video features inside this little body so I can completely understand that. But it seems like people are sort of slacking on realizing that this is actually an extremely capable photo camera too. And of course I've been taking this camera out with me on photo shoots as well as video shoots and I've got to say I'm extremely impressed with the results that I've got so far. So in this video I want to go through my experience using this in the real world and how it fares up to some of the other cameras that I've used previously. So as we already know, this camera features a 24.2 megapixel full frame sensor. Um, it has got your fully articulating flippy touchscreen, which is really nice. Um, and of course it has five stops of in-body image stabilization or six and a half stops when you pair it with a lens that is compatible. A full frame camera, flippy screen and excellent IBIS. Why is no one talking about this camera for photography? Chapter one, autofocus. So of course, the big controversial subject when it comes to Panasonic cameras, as well as this one, as well as any other ones, is the autofocus. Of course, in the video modes, people have been left quite disappointed with the autofocus capabilities of this camera. But let me just say, let's push that to the side, nip that in the bud, because for photography, this camera is a completely different beast when it comes to the autofocus. Here's a few shots that I took recently on a commission shoot where I was shooting in the higher burst rate with a mechanical shutter with the S5. And I'd say that maybe 90 to 95% of the shots were in focus and usable. And that hit rate is up there with the Sony's and the Canons of the world in terms of the burst rate autofocus. So I was actually really happy with that. And this situation in particular was actually quite tricky because we had the wood flakes and the debris flying over the subject's face, meaning that it was harder for the camera to actually see where the eye was and land focus there. When talking broadly about the experience I had with photo autofocus with the Sony cameras I used to have and comparing it to this one, I would say they're pretty much identical. Chapter two colors. I was extremely happy when I realized how good the colors were coming out of this camera, even on the raw images. Um, comparatively to my Sony cameras, I've got to say it's a lot more accurate, a lot more true to life, a lot more pleasing to the eye straight out of camera. Now, of course, what does this mean? Well, for me, as someone that takes thousands of photos on a weekly basis for my clients, and has to go through and edit each of the deliverable files before I send them off, it means that it's now saving me so much more time because I don't actually have to go through and do as much work to get the files to where I want them to be. Um, so that is a massive plus for me um, in using this S5 body for photography. I find it's very easy to get really, really pleasing skin tones out of this camera and there's no weird red or green shifts like some other camera brands. Um, so that's really, really nice. Um, and honestly, I've never had to touch the calibration panel inside of Lightroom to get pleasing colors out of this camera like I would with my Sony cameras. Like with my old Sony bodies, I literally sit there for ages in the calibration panel at the bottom of Lightroom, trying to move the reds and the hues of the the blues and all that sort of stuff to try and get the colors to sit at a good point that was good for me to start editing on. Chapter three, dynamic range. The dynamic range for this camera is great, just like you'd expect of any modern mirrorless camera. Um, so of course there's no complaints there. I find that I'm able to push and pull the files quite a lot and I can still retain a lot of details in those more contrasty parts like the highlights and the shadows. So when it comes to high ISO formats with this camera, I'm also extremely impressed. Of course, it being a full frame sensor, you'd expect it to be pretty good at high ISOs. But something that I've found with other brands is that the more you creep into those higher ISO values, you start to get some color shifts. Um, now, for me, the noise is managed manageable for any sort of high ISO because of course the luminous side will sort most of it out and knowing how to use your software appropriately will also sort that out as well. But something you can't sort out is when you get to the high ISO values like 12,800 and your colors are really starting to shift and go all muddy in certain areas, that's stuff that you can't really fix. Um, and something that's really good about this camera is that even when you get into those high ISO values, the colors still stay true to life, rich and nice and pleasing to the eye. So that's really, really nice. Um, in terms of the actual noise, is, I find that I don't really see much noise up until about ISO 6400 and of course that's a really really good range um, and even when the noise has started to creep in at those sorts of values um, it's quite pleasing and it's not distracting by any means. Again a simple little slider on that luminance slider will sort it right out um, and I find that the overall sharpness of the image also doesn't get lost too much as well when you are going to push that ISO higher and I'd definitely be comfortable with delivering images at values of ISO 8000 and higher to my clients because they clean up really nicely and the colour are just good when you get there. Chapter 4, IBIS. 
So as I mentioned previously, this camera has five stops of image stabilization in body or an extra stop and a half when you put on a compatible lens like this 24 to 105 I have here. So with this system right now, I've got six and a half stops of in body image stabilization, which is really nice. And it's not the crappy stabilization that Sony says they have in their cameras. It's not actually that useful. It's actually really good stabilization. So of course that's really nice for video, but it's also really nice for photo as well, because when you start to slow down that shutter speed handheld, you can actually get some really sharp results um, that you wouldn't be able to get if you didn't have that IBIS. I say that I'm pretty comfortable getting sharp shots at shutter speeds less than 1 30th of a second, which is insane. So that is an extremely good feature of this camera. And it's something that I don't think people realize is as useful as it is for low light photography. Having this good IBIS is also really, really useful when you're shooting at those telephoto focal lengths. God, that's really hard to say. Telephoto focal lengths. Telephoto focal length. Yeah, that's bloody hard. So yeah, if you're shooting at 105 millimeters or even more telephoto than that, and you're using a slower shutter speed than you normally would, then the IBIS is really gonna help you out a lot here. And of course, Pairing the IBIS with a full frame sensor makes it absolutely fantastic for low light and night photography. Because of course, with the really, really high ISO performance that you get from this full frame sensor, plus it being a full frame sensor, plus having IBIS, it means that you're gonna get some really, really nice handheld shots, even when there's a limited amount of light around. So if you are into night photography, I say that this camera will be a really good shout for that. So to wrap up this video, if you are a serious photographer that's looking for a contender for their next camera that's under 2000 pounds, then there's honestly nothing that comes close to this. I mean, it's lightweight, it's extremely ergonomic, it has fantastic IBIS, fantastic dynamic range, great ISO performance, and of course, a full frame sensor with your articulating screen and all that for under 2000 pounds. I mean, it's honestly fantastic. Um, the AF, like I said, is extremely impressive. Um, so please don't let you know the video AF put you off of this camera if you're into photo. Um, and yeah, it makes for a fantastic package if you are serious about your photography. So I hope this video has helped you. If it has, then please leave a like. Um, if you haven't already done so, then please consider subscribing to the channel and hopefully I shall see you in the next video. Thank you.